disaccharides. Disaccharides are double sugar and they are considered as macromolecules. It is being formed by adding two sugars together or monomers of sugars by a, a dehydration reaction and this is in order to form a glycosidic linkages between them. Disaccharides being composed of sucrose, lactose, and the maltose. Now, common among them is a monosaccharide glucose, which you may see at the right side. It's each one of them are having a monosaccharide glucose, and that is to be added with another monomer in order for them to form a disaccharides. Now, let's deal with them one by one. Sucrose. Sucrose is that white stuff that we mix to sweeten our drinks. And this is a common sugar or a table sugar. Now, sucrose is made from a glucose being combined to a fructose. And that they are connected together by alpha glycosidic bond. Now, Sucrose, by looking at the left side, do have a common sources. And these are from sugar cane, from a date fruit, a maple sap sugar, and honey. The lactose. Lactose is being made from a monomer glucose that is to be combined with a galactose. A galactose and a glucose are being held together by a beta glycosidic bond. And that common sources of lactose at the left are from animal sources such as the cheese, the milk, and other dairy products, and the maltose. Maltose is being formed when a glucose is being combined with another glucose and that this is being held together by a beta glycosidic bond. Common sources of maltose are from the malt sugar and the sugar are said to be made from grains. Germinated cereals that is being dried up by the use of hot air and sources are from barley, rice, wheat, and other grains. Oligosaccharides. Oligosaccharides are trisaccharides, meaning this is composed of a three monomers of saccharides. It has an empiric formula of C18, H32, and O16, meaning there are 18 carbon, 32 hydrogen, and 16 oxygen. The oligosaccharides is composed of a three monomers, namely the galactose, the fructose, and to complete, it will have a glucose that will form the trisaccharides. Oligosaccharides is a compound. It remains undigested in the small intestine. And instead, it promotes the growth of bipedus bacteria that is for the gut health. Oligosaccharides is also a prebiotics. This is fermented ingredients and that being a prebiotics, it improves the microflora in the gastrointestinal system. Oligosaccharides sources are from plant foods and this includes the onion, the garlic, the legumes, asparagus, and the soybeans. The polysaccharides, it is a large insoluble 
simple sugar, long chain of monosaccharide subunits. It is linked through a dehydration synthesis. And polysaccharides may number from 3 molecules to 1,000 molecules. And that's why if given 100 starts, the empirical formula can be as much as C600, H1000, and 0, 500. C, that means 600 carbons, 1,000 of hydrogen, and 500 of oxygen. Polysaccharides, indeed, is a complex carbohydrates. It is important for it plays a role as a storage of molecule and structural molecule. Polysaccharides is composed of starch, glycogen, and cellulose or fiber. Let us start with starch. Starch is a large polymer of glucose. It is a subunit storage for glucose in plants. And starch is necessary for ATP synthesis. Sources are from seeds, grains, corn, potatoes, beans, and rice. However, if all of this will be left unconsumed, then it will be converted to glycogen. And then further, it will be converted into body fats. There are two types of starch. And these are the amylose and the amylopectin. Amylose is a long and branched chain of a glucose subunits that is from the picture above there is a dotted line that says it is a continuing straight line if you take amylose with food on a higher level it is said that it can be broken down at a lower rate amylopectin is the branch structure by looking at the left side. When you take in food with a large amount of amylopectin, it is said that it will be digested rapidly. Now, talking about being branch, glycogen is even more branch than amylose and amylopectin as the picture shows in the middle. And at the right side, this is how complicated and branch a glycogen can be. Let's talk about glycogen. Glycogen is an animal storage form of carbohydrates. Glycogen has a polymer of glucose subunits. It is more highly branched than the amylopectin as described earlier. We store it in our liver and in our skeletal muscle. Having said all of this, if glycogen will be stored in the skeletal muscle and you want to get rid of it, you are advised to do a vigorous exercise for one hour and this will be worn out. Furthermore, if glycogen is stored in the liver and you want to get rid of it, you are advised to do fasting from 12 to 24 hours and this will be manifested if you feel the hunger in your body as manifested by shaking of your body due to hunger. Let's talk about the cellulose or the fiber. Now, cellulose is important molecular structure among plants. In fact, it is a cell wall component of a plant. And that the cellulose is a fiber in our diets. The leafy vegetables that we take and the whole grains. Unfortunately, 
we do not have the enzyme to digest the cellulose. However, it plays an important role as it provides bulk in the stomach. And it is literally a broom in our large colon. Another form of polysaccharides is a chitin. Chitin is a modified polysaccharide with nitrogen and from the formula being shown in the middle, C8HN, H15N, and O6. Chitin is found in the exoskeleton of an arthropods, particularly the crustaceans, and that chitin can also be found in the cell wall of papungi. This having an amino acid group attached to a sugar molecule. Now, other than chitin, another form of polysaccharides is the peptidoglycans. Peptidoglycans is a complex polysaccharide found in macromolecules. These macromolecules is flexible and rugged. What is remarkable about peptidoglycans is that this can be found in the bacterial cell wall. And each monomer has a peptide chain attached to it. Now, it is these peptidoglycans that makes a penicillin work at its best. Among all the gram-positive bacteria that is indicated below, there are multiple of them. The uh, penicillin will inhibit the peptidoglycan's production. Thus, the cell will become leaky and fragile and that bacteria will burst to death until the breakdown. Once again, we have reached the end of discussion. Let us assess and check your comprehension. You may pause the video for a good glance. Enjoy studying, and I hope that this material is of help. All the best to you. That's all, folks. This has been your nurse, Radiologico Guru, saying thank you for watching and enjoy studying.